Everything you know is an illusion. Everything you've been taught by your parents, by your friends, by your teachers, it's all an illusion. But they didn't know any better. They didn't do it on purpose. That's actually how the cabal got it to work. You know, you probably remember going back to childhood, and this is the key point. Remembering when you were a child, did you feel like things weren't right? That there was just something off? You were quiet most of the time. Everybody called you shy. But you were observing everyone. You are watching the way they behaved, watching the way they think. And they knew it, you know. They knew what you were doing. And it made them uncomfortable. Because they were brainwashed. They were all brainwashed. And they, and they knew they were in, in some way, some subconscious way, they knew they were brainwashed. And you knew they were brainwashed. And you just tried to fit in because you're a child and you didn't know what else to do, right? Because you had to depend on all these people for everything. But you knew. You always knew that there was something wrong. You know, and you sat back and you just kind of observed you know, what they were doing, what they were saying, and you didn't agree with a lot of it. None of it really made sense. Maybe your family had a religion and they went to some kind of church or something like that and you just didn't get any of it and you're just, I don't get this, this isn't real. And you knew the hypocrisy behind all of it. You knew the people sitting in the pews, most of them, didn't even understand what their religion was all about because you knew how they acted in real life and there was a dichotomy. And instead of sitting in a church, maybe they should have been outside actually improving their world. And you knew that they were hypocritical, even as a small child. But you didn't know what to do with it. You know, you're just a kid, so. You know, we, we um, part of the plan for the suppression, oppression of this prison planet is to obviously take the children and wipe them. They pretty much kill their souls, basically. That way there, through fear and intimidation, they could create a next generation of the slaves that are used on this planet by your controllers. Now, what I've been told is that the only controllers left here are your, you know, your elite group there. But the thing is, they don't have any power over you unless you give them that power. And, and you're giving them that power. So many people are giving them that power. There's not enough awake people here yet. So what's going to happen is they're going to have to be force-fed reality. Because they don't live in reality. You know, I, I always feel like I'm walking in an insane asylum run by the inmates. The only thing that's real is, is this, is nature. This is the only thing that's real. And you might have remembered as a child that you would use nature as a place of comfort, as a place of sensibility, because it, it was that. And here's a bunch of little sweeties, birds, you probably can't, maybe just see them kind of fly away here as we walk closer. <laughs> um, but for me, um, the only thing that keeps me here, because I literally can't stand it here, <laughs> is this, because this is so nice. And they just told me that when I walked in to the body that I'm using here, um, that they picked this genetic strain. Um, there's some people walking by, and it's interesting, these people that are walking behind me, um, you know, they're just complaining about somebody else. <laughs> It's like, yeah, typical, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of too bad. And, you know, that's giving away your power, really. Um, if you're somewhere with people you don't feel comfortable, then you'd leave, right? You know, you don't have to create a scene if you don't feel that would work, but, you know. Um, and there, it was interesting, one point that these people made up, what I thought was kind of nice, it kind of worked really well, was they were saying, you know, these, I guess there's these kind of, individuals in this group they're with um, that are trying to like be the 
the gatekeepers are trying to get people to do things. They call them like the yes people, like, oh yes, do this, do that. Those people are, are I don't know, you know, those people are going to really suffer when um, the prison is lifted. And what's enlightening to me hearing the conversation from these people, and I can feel their energies. I, that's what I do. I, I, um, I feel the vibrations that come off of people. And it's like they're almost waking up. They're almost, they almost got it. They almost understand. You know, but they, they just, they need that extra little push from someone, and I would say an extraterrestrial, because I think the energy there would be just right. Um, just to say, look, you got this. You understand it. You, you're, what you're thinking is correct. Because that intensive brainwashing that is so rooted in fear is eating people alive. They don't even understand what they think and they don't understand their own thoughts. They don't understand that they actually think. That when something feels off, something's off. <laughs> when something feels off, because it's off. Um, yeah, and stop absorbing what any other being tries to tell you. These other humans that are around you, they don't have any right to tell you anything. Not that they can't talk to you or give you advice or anything, but I mean, but, but the idea of like judging you if you don't comply, <laughs> I think that's really where I'm trying to get is if you're around people that judge you if you don't comply, if you don't give away your soul, if you don't give away who you are, if you don't give away your sense of self, those kinds of people, those kinds of people are extremely dangerous. So you can feel sorry for them, but you just walk away from those kinds of people. We really need to begin dissolving the, oh my God, a cormorant, look at that. Ah, just brilliant, look at that. No, it's a loon. There was a cormorant over by the beach. This is a loon. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So these are the people you want to be around, the animals, you know. They understand everything. They don't give away their power. They know you don't give away their power. See, humans don't like animals sometimes because they realize that the animals can't be controlled. So they use violence to control the animals because they don't know anything else. Because you've been trained that violence is always the answer. You know, when you think about when you're being in school, right? When you're in school, it's all about violence. It's all about crafting a situation where one child um, has to basically act in a psychopathic manner against everybody else in that arena. And then you have this um, tyrannical being that has control over all this. Just not learning. <laughs> having a tyrannical being, have a situation that's all set up between fear and punishment is not learning, right? That's not learning. In fact, most of the kids should be out here walking like this, getting an idea of nature, learning about the plants and learning about the different rocks and watching the animal and just being still in this kind of environment. But that's not what they want, obviously. They want you to be just a cog in a wheel. They want you to only know fear and violence and the psychopathic type relationship between beings where one being is always trying to one-up the other being or take advantage of them or, or judge them or that's how school works and don't get me started on sports <laughs> we don't have sports on our planet um, not that we don't play little games and things like that but we don't have sports we don't have competition because we don't understand why you would want to have competition what what is the purpose of competition I don't understand that. I never understood that. So, um, yeah. They brought me here. Well, when I walked in, this is the body that, that was in this area. That um, This is a reservoir in Massachusetts. And um, not so much this section of it, but the water here. The big, it looks like a big lake. You know, it's the reservoir. But it reminds me of home. Which is why I would spend a lot of my childhood here. 
I said, oh, this will remind you of home. And the light today reminds me of home. It's not a sharp light. It's just a soft light. It's just so nice. And there's a beautiful, there's actually a, a hill here. But if you go up this way, there's a big, beautiful green field that goes on for about a couple miles. And that's kind of where my house is up in Era. In this like fjord section, because there's these big tall mountains we don't have here, but there's big tall snow capped mountains and there's a lake like this outside of my house. I spent a lot of time by the lake. But the quietness here, other than their airplane, I don't know if you can hear that, but <laughs> the quietness here. Um, this is what the cabal doesn't want you to, to experience. They, that's why they're killing nature every chance they get, because they don't want you to have any nature. Um, and, it, you know, you guys, I hope nobody here understands uh, any of this green stuff that's happening in the world. That's, that's actually the cabal that's causing, you know, all this idea of green. And, you know, they're, they're, it's just, it's just baloney. Um, because they're still making the plastics. They're still doing, they still have all the, the, um, the factories. They still have all the toxins. They still have all that, you know. And they're blaming the regular people for this. <laughs> it's like. I don't know, I'm not making plastics in my basement, are you? So you really need to kind of take a look at all of the agendas and narratives that are being fed to you by the cabal and their minions. Things like climate change and all that kind of stuff. That's all baloney. There's no climate change. What's happening on Earth is a poisoning. These people who run these companies are poisoning the Earth. The industrial complex is one of the biggest scourges on this planet. And you think that, well, I'll just go and vote and then, the, you know, your vote doesn't matter, that's a joke. There is no such thing as voting, all of that is controlled. But whoever you vote for anyway isn't gonna do anything. Because if you actually voted for someone who had the plan to expose what actually was going on, they'd probably be removed anyway. So your earth is being poisoned. There is no climate change. There's just a poisoning that these elites through their industry are just on purpose, on purpose, trying to destroy this planet. And they're blaming you. That way there you'll hate each other and um, you'll do your own population control. But it's never going to change the poisoning of the earth. That's what you need to understand. You're not the ones that's poisoning the earth. They are. And they're poisoning you at the same time. If you wanted to solve the plastics problem, stop making plastics. We don't have plastics. They don't need to be making plastics. They don't need any of this stuff. You know, this is the key point. When you talk about things like fossil fuel, when you talk about things like the, the energy grid and all that solar baloney and all that, they, they, you don't need any of that. They already have... Over unity, zero point energy. You already have that. You already have propulsion systems that don't rely on fossil fuels. You've had that for decades. It's just being withheld from you. So you want to ask yourself that question. If we don't need fossil fuels, because we already have the technology, then why are you being forced to use them? And then being told that you are poisoning. There's climate change. There's this, there's that, there's this. Because the solution is there. We have the solutions for all of these problems. But they're not using the solutions. They're hiding the solutions from you. So when catastrophic, excuse my hair, I'm walking around. <laughs> when catastrophic disclosure happens, the catastrophe is going to be for them. Because the billions of humans, once they realize what's been done, that they've been lied to, that family members have died and been poisoned and yada yada, you know all that story, right? Simply because you're nothing to your leaders, to your governments, to your industry, to your medical facilities, to your educational systems, to every institution that you have on this prison planet has been created and geared to your destruction. So when people start to understand that, the repercussions for the bad humans, 
um, are probably going to be severe. But they asked for it. I don't feel bad for them because they had an option. So you see, they don't have to continue doing what they're doing. They're doing what they're doing because they're choosing that. They're choosing their own destruction. Of course, they're trying to bring down as many of the other Terrans as they can. And sadly, there will be some deaths. There needs to be quite a few, actually. Um, unfortunately. It's an interesting cycle where, you know, it's kind of a chicken and egg story. You know, which came first. Where you have so many beings on a planet that, God, I mean... All reality has been hidden from ever to the smallest little thing. To history, to like archaeology, you know, all the sciences. It's actually being withheld. It's literally being twisted. And the gatekeepers of these things. Yeah, you, you have to wonder what goes on in their minds, what they're thinking. You know, I think a lot of humans still still think that reality is crazy. <laughs> I think they still are so entrenched in the cult that reality to them is illusion so to them what we're talking about what we know is illusion we're the crazy ones you know they can't process information because when you're in a cult you don't process information. Everything becomes filtered through that cult agenda, what you've been taught, what you've been fed. So a lot of people are going to have a hard time with understanding what exactly is going on. And there's even some topics you can't even talk about. There's some stuff going on in the Middle East right now, which, you know, if you talked about it, you would be instantly trashed. But that whole thing, the fact that you can't talk about the Middle East right now safely is because the cabal is entrenched there. And they were using scapegoats in order to keep themselves safe. So everything that they do is all based upon this perverted narrative, you know, of untouchable groups and things like that. That's how they keep themselves safe, you know, places like Switzerland. Switzerland is neutral, yeah, because it's the seat of the, <laughs> it's the seat of your demons. That's why it's neutral. Not the people of Switzerland, obviously, but yeah, the cabal is in there very deeply. I was shown several places like that. Obviously, the Vatican, you know, I think we all know the story. They showed me a couple of places. It was Germany, they said, Germany, of course, Switzerland, um, Italy, different parts of Italy. They showed me Pennsylvania. They showed me, of course, you know, Washington, D.C. area. And these are where some of your, uh, you know, yeah, your, uh, your friendly neighborhood uh, <laughs> tyrants are, are doing their thing. Crazy. But it takes people like you, star seeds, and other light workers, the angelic light workers, the elementals, everybody who's here, those who are kind of the ancestor type figures, many of your Native American, any of your indigenous reincarnations um, who are seated here now are um, called forth, basically. You know, you guys, you all need to come forward. That's why I'm, I'm doing this, because they, they begged me to come forward last year, and I didn't, because I just didn't want to. I hate social media. But you have to use the earth stuff to get this information out there. So, yeah, you guys need to start coming out. They can't kill us all, as you're saying. <laughs> we need a lot of you coming out. We need to make this story um, the main story. You need, you need to be the bigger voice than the CIA agenda, than all the psyops that have been going on, all of your nasty government stuff that they've been feeding people. You need to be the bigger voice of that. And um, I also, you know, say upstairs, you guys got to start showing stuff. You know, like your people really, you know, of course, and how many people are looking up, up in the sky, you know, but they, they, they really need to start. God, I don't know. It just seems like without... For many humans, until they actually see something, and I get that, you know, I totally understand that. Being, I'm a very analytical person. <laughs> but until they actually see stuff, you know, I, I think some people aren't going to get it. And they really need to start seeing stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, where I live, if you go outside at night, 
you'll see stuff. Up, you know, you look up in the sky at night and you'll see stuff. Every, almost every night I'll see some craft. And wherever you live, you will probably see some craft too. You don't have to be out late at night. Well, actually the best um, scout ship I ever saw was at 11 o'clock in the morning, midday, following alongside the car. Um, so it doesn't have to be at night. You just, just sit outside like right here and, and look up. Look up into the clouds and, and just spend some time like that. But at night, sitting out under the stars, this is a beautiful thing. Very peaceful. And, um, yeah, I just can't wait for for people here on this planet to, to meet their family upstairs. And your family upstairs is really, really anxious to meet with you as well. Really anxious. I think we've all had it, honestly. I think we've all had it. Um, yeah, this morning, Ika was not very happy. It's not his... He was, he was cheerful yesterday. We were like having like a lot of joking and everything. But today, not so much this morning. So I was like, uh-oh, stuff's going down. What, what happened? You know, I he just overworked himself, I think. He's going to, he spends some time with, um, with my friend in Florida. He likes to go on the beach and they cuddle together. It's nice. We do a lot of cuddling. You, you probably won't experience that because I know before, um, well, I'm a hell. So when the hell come here, that's your typical, what they call the Nordics, right, I guess. I mean, Nordics aren't a hell. I mean, any extraterrestrial, which I hate that word, but who is sort of the blonde, blue-green-eyed, pale skin kind of thing. They call them Nordics, but we're, we're a hell. We're from Era on the Pleiades. So we like to cuddle. And I, mean, I, I know where Ika and I are going to get together and do a, a talk about that because it's not sexual. So, yes. Humanity and sexuality has been completely perverted, so we'll talk about that. It's very sad, and it was done on purpose to mess up your DNA, and it worked really well. It's unbelievable. I mean, you can't, <laughs> I tell you, the the bad, the Anunnaki and um, the reptilians and your, you know, humans here that, that joined that group, um, you guys, they were amazing. I mean, they really knew what they were doing. They still know what they're doing. They're still pretty good. <laughs> They got you guys, you know, so many humans, right? Right where they want them. I mean, it's, it, was, it was masterful. So, um, the Ahel, um, we have this unusual thing where, <laughs> for this planet, we are very friendly, very funny. You know, everybody has different personality. You can't say, what are they like? Well, they're, them. there's not a they. But um, everything isn't, I mean, actually nothing is sexualized on our planet. See, here on your planet, everything's been, been sexualized, but perverted in a grotesque way. Um, so upstairs, we cuddle and, you know, there's not it's nothing wrong with that. It's just really nice. I always seem like we're a bunch of little foxes all curled up together in, in the field. You know, it's like, so, um, yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, I don't know. It's just so weird down here. Um, the whole understanding of, of inter interaction. Oh yeah, well you guys have a real problem with putting you know males and females together. It's like some kind of weird thing going on there. I won't even get into the religions. I don't think you know. I think I don't, I think that story's been told. I think that's just some common sense there. Yeah, um, but we'll talk about that. Ika had actually had a really interesting um, conversation with a fellow once that I telepath for him because um, he was talking about negentropy and the DNA and how that actually works in um, production of children. So um, entropy versus negentropy in the production of children. And how on earth it's been, um, as I said, on purpose, where, um, oh God, how can I explain it without making a sound? <laughs> oh, look at the crow. Ah, gorgeous. So, uh, Yeah, the, the production of, of a child is, is done in entropy because the mother and the father aren't matched properly. So mm, the energy field of their emotions, of their understanding, of their actual genetics as well, isn't matched. So um, the whole process creates uh, an entropy when the child is produced the act of producing the child and that affects the dna now this was done on purpose actually if you go back a couple thousand years the um anunnaki were doing this to make sure that the humans the, those humans that were aggressive that were violent that mated that way 
you know, like, like, I don't know what to, how animals don't do this. I mean, it's just disgusting. You know, it's this violent, almost rape type mating type thing that was, that was, um, encouraged because if you mate like that, obviously you're really going to screw up the DNA of the child and the child is going to be a violent thing. And that's what they wanted. Um, they wanted humanity to be, to be a regressive race and, and they did it. It was a win, win, win. Um, I actually pick up that, that vibration in humans, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it. So when I pick up, when I telepath um, other star races, I usually can tell what they are by their vibration. So when they come through, I'm like, oh, this is, this is this kind of person. This is that kind of person. This is where they're from, right? Um, so being around humans for me, so that's why I can't be around any kind of crowds. I, I, now, now that I've activated more DNA, I can't be around crowds of people because it's just too intense for me. It's, it's their, there's a, they're sending out a vibration that's very awkward, that, that makes me feel very, because obviously when you telepath, you feel what somebody else is feeling. So for those people who are concerned about meeting um, a benevolent extraterrestrial, you shouldn't be, because what's going to happen is, and you won't be when it happens, because you're going to feel their energy when they're around you, and it's going to make you very comfortable, because you're going to, you are going to telepath, you're already telepathic. So you're going to telepath with that being and you're going to feel their energy and they're going to make you very comfortable. So there's no worries there. But being around humans, uh, for me, and the crow flies by again. There he goes. Ah, it's gorgeous. Look at that. See, animals don't vibe. Animals have a beautiful vibration. And there's a lot of uh, reasoning and rationality in, in, in their minds when they telepath with you. So animals, of course, are already telepathic. And it's a great place to practice is to talk to is to be with non-humans where you're not using language, verbal language. Very little of telepathy is actually verbal language. Um, so you feel what another person feels. And I feel what a room full of people or a group of people is actually uh, vibrating out. So it isn't that I'm making a judgment. It's just an observation that I feel in my body, which makes me very uncomfortable. So if I'm in a room of people, I can hear conversations across an entire room. I can hear people talking. I know what they're talking about. I can feel, every, you know, I can, I can zoom in on different groups of people and pick up their conversations. I can do this ever since a child. So it's been very, very awkward, to say the least. <laughs> um, so that's what I felt this morning when Ika came through. Because we spend the morning together. And, you know, he was just not in a great place today. He's just too tired, really. And um, he's like, can you take, he asked me if I could talk to my friend and he could spend some time. He sees him when she goes to the beach at night. He says, can I, can I spend some time there with her tonight? And he showed me, you know, him sitting with her and hugging her and just having a nice time in the, in the beautiful twilight there and that beautiful ocean side. Um, so that's a big yes, of course. He's going to be there tonight. Um, he just, he just works too hard, you know. Uh, people ask, what are they doing? You know, a lot of the extraterrestrials are working their ass off. <laughs> They're really, really, you know, burning the candle at both ends and it's taking its toll um, to help you guys. Yeah, and, and, and the, honestly, they feel the same way you do. Like, when is this going to end? When is this going to end? You know? But the way the sun is coming through now and sparkling right there in the water, God, that's, that's just magic, isn't it? Magic. This is where you need to be. This is where you need to get quiet. This is where you need to telepath. See who comes in. See who talks to you. And they may be very high vibrational beings. They may be non-physical beings that come through. They're the easiest, by the way. I think there's this kind of... Well, this is the thing that humans have to stop doing. There's not a... Ra oh, I talked to the Nine. Or I talked to these non-physical Arcturians. Or I did you know, Those are the easiest ones to connect with. <laughs> it's not a game, folks. Stop. This is the one thing you got to stop doing. Stop comparing yourself and stop competing that is cabal so i'm going to warn you with that now like even though i don't like to give advice you know how i hate that i just want you to think about that all right when you compare yourself to somebody else or somebody else does that they compare themselves to you or they tell you you can't do something or they're special because they're doing that's a red flag that's a red flag if an extraterrestrial comes in and says stuff like that same thing move on i'm not going to you know, I'm not going to talk to that kind of person. So, um, yeah, you know, feel it out. See what they're see what they're saying, what they're thinking. But be very wary of anything that has to do with competition. 
right? Be very wary of that. That's kind of, that is a red flag right there. Everybody is here. Every being, every rock, every tree is here for a purpose. They're all, you know, otherwise it wouldn't be here. So, yeah, you know, that, that, that's part of what the cabal does, right? You know, animals are less than, certain people are less than, and unless you're making a certain amount of money or unless you do this or unless you do that, that is all illusion. That is the matrix. So keep that in mind, right? Well, just think about it. Try to just break it down. You know, don't, you know, who is any human being? Here you are on your planet. This is your planet now. And you have a bunch of other humans because animals, do, you're the only ones that do this, you know. Animals don't do this. You don't see a squirrel cop. You don't see a squirrel government. You don't see squirrels, you know, stopping other squirrels that are running by going, oh, can I see your license to, to drive, to, to run by this area? Like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Think about all of the rights that you have as a being on your own planet that you've given away to other humans. They don't have any right. Every single system you have on this planet is fake. No one has the right to tell you where, when, and how you can do anything on this planet. This is your planet. If you want to travel somewhere, travel. You don't have to ask permission. You don't have to show documentation. You don't have to do anything. You know, it, it's just, it's just so sad. I don't travel anywhere because there's no way. I'm not going to, I don't comply. I'm not going to comply. I, 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 you know, I wasn't really born on this planet. I walked in on this planet, but this body is, was born on this planet. So, hey, this is my planet. I'm going to, you know, I don't have to ask anyone's permission to go anywhere, to do anything. This is my planet. So, um, yeah, you, you know, all that stuff has to break down. All that stuff. Stop asking people's permission to do anything on the planet you were born on, period. Or walked in, same thing, right? That's all going to come down, you know. So, um, next video I hope to do, I was kind of, you know, not sure what I want to do. Do you talk about bilocating? You know, I know a lot of people here probably have done that or, or they're not sure if they have. Have you ever bilocated? Um, we'll talk about that um, in one series coming up. But I also want to introduce my friends back home. So, Cameo and his girls and all that, you know like to talk about them a little bit. Um, it's pretty cool. So when I go back home and I play with my, my friends. <laughs> I like my friends. Um, so, yeah, it's getting late after, a little later in the afternoon here. Beautiful area. Nature. Like, this is what the earth should look like. You know, just all nature. This is what it's going to look like. I've seen it. And I know a lot of you have too. You've been given visions of future earth. It's magical. Just this, look at this. Wow, you know, gorgeous. This is what we're gonna get back. Um, this is what keeps me here, honestly, because I can't stand it here. And um, when I see the, the animals and the trees and the water, and I'm like, okay, yeah, it's, it reminds me, like, yeah, it's you guys, <laughs> it's you guys. It's the animals, it's the nature. That's, that's why I'm here, you know? And um, yeah, that's, that's, I'm going to fight for them. So, all right. Enjoy your time in, in nature and um, grace and gratitude.